Tatiana Renee here. Welcome back to my channel. We're back today with another book review. And I handed it in a book. <laughs> today, the book we're going to be reviewing is called Healing the Gangsta's Heart. And it is by two authors, uh, A.J. Davis. I'm sorry, A.J. Davidson. Sorry. And M. Monique. Those are the two authors. As usual, it is an urban romance novel because what else are we reviewing over here and it's about a woman named i want to say her name is gabrielle not gabriella i think it's gabrielle and she's kind of stuck in a period of mourning um because she loses her husband at a young age uh and nine years after her husband's death <clears throat> Nine years after her husband's death, she meets a man named Pressure. That's his street name. His real name is Chance. And he is kind of like smitten with her from the moment they meet. And wants her to give him a chance at a relationship, essentially. Okay? Uh... <laughs> I rated this book a four out of five. I this is I said the other day about how some books I read are comfort books. This is very much so a comfort book. I've reread this book a few times. Um, overall, I think it's a really good book. Things I like about it, I like that the ages are realistic. So, Chance, I'm not gonna call him Pressure. Chance is. In the streets. <laughs> uh, but he's on his way out the streets. If y'all see that blowing in my glasses, ignore it. It's a cover we have on our patio. I'm sitting right in front of our patio. I'm sorry. Ignore my ignore the reflection in my glasses. But Chance is out in them streets, but he also owns businesses. Um, so he's kind of like on the cusp of giving up street life. Y'all know how those kind of things go. And Gabrielle is a doctor. Shout out to her. But I do like the fact that their ages are realistic. And it's not a situation where... Because, you know, sometimes the romance novels try to keep the main characters really young. And so they'll be like, oh, she's a doctor, but she was super smart and graduated high school at 12 or whatever. She's really only 25 now, but she has completed all of her medical school and, and her residency and this and she's the head of orthopedic surgery now. And it's just like, she's not old enough, realistically. She's not old enough. So I do like the fact that they're both in their 30s. Excuse me. Um, it's a multi POV book. I know I love multiple points of view because it gives you a fullness, I feel like, to the story in terms of getting different perspectives of the same situation. I, I, I love a PO, multi-POV book. Something else that I really like about this book is that the authors do a good job of letting Gabrielle keep the love she has for her husband while still processing the fact that she's in love with somebody else now. Her husband is um, shot in, unalived in front of her um she's also shot in that moment but she survives but she was pregnant the baby did not make it her husband did not make it so she's like in the state of grief throughout the book because she they never find out who they don't know who killed him and so she leaves town and so we nine we we meet back up with her nine years later and now she's trying to start something with this new guy. But it doesn't feel like she has to pretend that the husband was not the love of her life. Like, Chance knows that. He actually knew who her husband, he knew her husband. They were cordial. They weren't like besties, but they were cool. Because they both were in the same industry. If you know what I mean. Um, so... He talks to her about him in the book. He 
she's selling the home that he, the first husband had built for her. And Chance knows that she loves that house and he really wants to get to know her basically. And because at first she's very like, no, I'm not interested. He buys the house and gifts it back to her. Like, I know you wouldn't really want this house to be let go of. Like, so I do like the fact that there's space allowed for her deceased husband. It's not a situation where it's like, this man is here now and you got to move on from him. Like she still interacts with the in-laws in the book, even after the, her husband has passed. So I like the fact that there's not a erasure of her first husband. Things that I did not like about the book. In the book, Gabrielle has a best friend named Portia. And we are led to believe that Portia is super jealous of Gabrielle. She unintentionally set up Gabrielle and her first husband, Red, uh, to in the big shebang that got him killed. Um, she's pretty much jealous of the fact that Chance is interested in Gabrielle. But I feel like, and we know that she's cheating on her husband. But I feel like um, Portia's cheating on her husband. But I feel like we do not know enough about Portia for us not to like Portia. I feel like they just threw a bunch of stuff in to make sure we knew that we not supposed to like her. But it wasn't flushed out enough to where it was like, I wouldn't like her either. Because I feel like there wasn't even, there's not a moment in the book where we get a genuine friendship between them there's another friend who if i'm not mistaken is her deceased husband's cousin she's in the book saying like i don't trust portia i don't like that girl but we never get to meet portia you know what i'm saying like portia is just told like this is who portia is just how you should feel about her but we don't necessarily get to meet her in the book and i wish that the authors would have given us a chance to meet Portia, as opposed to just being like, Portia the shitty friend, Portia the shitty person, here's Portia. You get what I'm saying? I hope that makes sense. Something, <laughs> something I said was a little iffy about the book. Uh, so in the beginning of the book, Chance, well, no, it's not the beginning of the book. In the nine years later, um, once again, Gabrielle still has this house that her husband customized for her. It's, she doesn't live in, I didn't tell y'all where it was set. It's set, her, they, she lived in Georgia with her husband. When her husband's murdered, she moves to Florida. I'm sorry, I didn't tell y'all that. But Chance, something happens to Chance. He gets shot. Gabrielle's in the vicinity when it happens. She saves him, brings him back to her house. And she has like a whole hospital in her house basically. She patches him up, stitches him up, and all that stuff. Of course, we don't know she's a doctor in that moment, but we do eventually find out she's a doctor, so it makes sense. But she patches him up. But then she orders all the parts really quickly, repairs his car, and and I wrote down, I'm like, is she a super spy? <laughs> now, they do explain it in the book. It's like her husband taught her how to repair vehicles. But this lady is literally, he, the car is like sprayed. So he's like, you getting windows, you getting whatever you need to sand out bullet holes and doors, you spray painting the car. And this is not like over the course of a month. This is not, this might be a week. It may be a week. And it's just like, man, you doing all this that fast? Now, of course, him, her fixing him the fact that she's a doctor makes sense. But the way she's like in her garage going full mechanic and the explanation is just, oh, Red taught her how to do this because he basically wanted her to be the Bonnie to his Clyde. But that's just like... Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, something else that I said I did not like about the book 
is what about her life in Florida? That's what I put. Because it, towards the end of the book, Chance does eventually convince Gabrielle to come back to Georgia and be with him. But she's a doctor with her own private practice. And it's like, she just left. And came back to Georgia. Which is fine. Because that's what her life was prior to. But she wasn't a doctor prior to. So... Did she finish medical school? Now that I'm thinking about that, where did she finish medical school? Anyways, she was in Florida. So now I'm trying to figure out, like, this, I am very much so, like, what happened next? I'm that person, like, what? What happened after that? So now I'm wondering, like, what happened? Did she go back to Florida and just tell all her employees, y'all fired, I'm moving? Or... Did they, they, I mean, if they got kids and stuff, they're not relocating. So where did her employees and stuff go? And why couldn't Chance just move to Florida? Chance owns a hotel, but he's not there for the day-to-day -day operations. I don't know. Anyway, I did write it for <laughs> Now I saw it. I didn't like the book. <laughs> I did. I do like the book. I told you, I read it all the time. I rated it a four out of five. Overall, I think it's a pretty good book. I love the fact that we see her slowly working up the her nerve to move on. Because I feel like that's probably hard if you lose the person who you feel like was the love of your life and you lost a child in the process. The guilt that she must feel in moving on is very palpable. Like, you can feel that. It's not a situation where it's glossed glossed over in the book you can very much so feel the questioning of herself like is this what I should be doing like I'm going against my husband by moving on like how can I trust this person the way I trusted this person and this person was taken from me especially because they were only she was only in her 20s when her husband died if we if I'm aging her right but overall I like the book four out of five I will read it again a million times because I'm going to read it again. I read this book maybe six times now. I love this book. This is a short little kickabout. <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything else in the book worth mentioning. I don't know. It's just the spy aspect of it. And then they eventually find out that a chance his cousin is the one who got the car shot up and she finds out based off of like his tone of voice because when the car got shot up I, I don't remember the line he said but he basically leans in the car like he dead or we got him or something like that and she, you know it's a traumatic situation but she remembers that voice and she heard the voice later when she was when her and chance were officially like together she heard him talking to his cousin or about his cousin or something like that and overhears the cousin's voice and he, she's like, wait a minute now. So she finds out who did it and she takes him out, but, and that's another thing. Even in that, it's not like Chance is upset that she's still trying to vindicate her hu husband and now she's moved on. He gives her space to do that and helps her through it. And I just enjoy that about the book. That's my favorite part about the book. My favorite part. The way he is allowing her space to fall in love with him on her own, if that makes sense, but at the same time still love her husband, I think that's great. Anyways, that's all I got for this book today. Again, it's called Healing Against Your Heart by AJ Davidson and M. Monique. Like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff down below. And I will see you guys in my next video.